Welcome back, Tribe. Have an insane one here that they're trying to make misogyny terrorism charges now. Watch this. Yvette Cooper, the, uh, who is the Home Secretary, she is saying that extreme misogyny will be treated as terrorism for the first wow. time under government plans to combat the radicalisation of young men online. She's ordered a review of Britain's counterterrorism strategy to urgently address gaps in the government's stance and to look at tackling violence against women and girls in the same way as Islamist and far-right extremism amid fears that current Home Office guidance is too narrow. Well, let's ask the opinion of Aisha Ali Khan. She's a human rights and women's rights campaigner. Aisha, thank you for joining me this afternoon. What do you make of this proposal from uh, Yvette Cooper, the Home Secretary? Hi. So we've been talking about something like this for the last, gosh, four or five years now. That's crazy. Calls for extreme misogyny to be treated as terrorism. This is the country that's currently falling apart. The UK, where they're having knife fights, machete fights out in public. It's two-tier policing, mass migration, social upheaval and instability. The locals are being treated like crap. The migrants that are there throwing their passports and identification over the boats as they're crossing it to Europe get preferential treatment. They are housed. They are fed. They are taken care of. Meanwhile, the locals working their minimum wage jobs can't get any of that. There's no government subsidies for them under the guise of migration. This virtue signaling that Europe is responsible for taking in the world's destitute. This is crazy to watch. If anybody's paying attention, you have to go on X to see any of this stuff. Just see the riots. Just see all the clashes with police. See people getting arrested for posting memes. In the UK, you can get arrested right now for posting memes. The UK has even said, the police commissioner said that they'll go after Americans if they post memes about what the hell is going on in the UK. How insane is it for spreading misinformation or inciting hate? Extreme misogyny. Who defines what extreme means? Here we go again. People in the UK, you have no rights. You're not allowed to open your mouth. Simply criticizing what's going on with the poorest borders, people not being vet and checked properly, just gangs of people being let in the countries. And these aren't families. These are young, military-aged males. A vast majority of them coming over are of fighting age. All men. There are no kids. There are no women. Hardly any. That, that was true when the Syrian destabilization happened. Families were actually coming over. That was true. But now this latest batch of migrants are not families. They're just people taking advantage of the welfare programs in the EU. And every time this kind of idea comes to the table and we wow. discuss it, um, we get comments like the comment you just read out saying, um, you know, uh, violence against women and you know, that kind of domestic abuse should not fall under the, the category of terrorism. And I think what we've definitely seen um, has been a massive increase in young people wow. being radicalized online, especially young men. And these men have been, um, I mean, they're unhappy, they're, uh, they can't get a relationship and they fall under the category of incels, which stands for involuntary celibate. Basically so these are who, young men who are who can't get a relationship. Yeah. They are in cells, involuntary celibates, as you say, and they yeah. are they they hate women as a result of this, and they they fall into. You see how the destabilization of a nation through mass migration in parallel societies now they're coming after men. Do you see how they make a rule to combat something else and broadly apply it to everybody else? Extreme misogyny by whose standards and what will be the charges? If they're terrorism charges, you're going away for a long time. Why? Because you posted something sexist on Twitter. Holy crap. Well, whether they fall into or, or go go there voluntarily, we can talk about in a second. But they, yeah. they're certainly very, very misogynistic and sometimes violently uh, misogynistic. I, 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 I wonder what you... To. Um, I mean, these are men who would love to have a relationship with women and for some reason they can't. And then they end up blaming um, not just women, but uh, not just a particular woman, but all women um, and the rise of feminism and so on. So they feel very hard done by, very angry, very upset. And those are those feelings are turning into basically towards violence, uh, to punish this okay. woman, to punish all women. And that's something. How many percentage of these toads actually do anything? It's mostly men letting off steam online. Please fix the economy. Why don't we talk about why it's so goddamn hard to get a job? Why it's so hard to raise a family on one income? Why your woman has to work in order for ends to be met? Why dual income household is the standard today and that's what it takes just to survive. Forget the kids. Why can't we afford housing? 
Why are groceries so expensive? Why does it cost so much for electricity? Why don't they have wages that keep up with inflation and cost of living? What is happening to the economic model we're living under where it's failing young people tremendously? They cannot even afford to go on dates. It's too expensive at restaurants. They're hardly feeding themselves. They're living with roommates. Do you think if we solve the economic woes of young men, maybe all this other shit would disappear? This is what they won't tell you. But you know what they will do is throw you in jail for voicing your concerns, for being a little angry online, for making a sexist joke on X. Oh, God forbid you commented under somebody's post on Instagram, a funny meme, and you said something sexist straight to jail. Terrorist. Holy shit. UK, I'm sorry. You're a shithole. I would never move to the UK with shit like this being even spoken about on mainstream media. This blows my mind. Romania is a thousand times better. The UK is not even an ounce of what it used to be. Holy fuck. Avoid the West and Western Europe like the plague. Jesus. Something that um, Yvette Cooper and, and obviously previously we've spoken to the sort of people around uh, this legislation as well, uh, how to tackle this. So it's been formally... Well, we hope that it's going to be fully recognised uh, in the next couple of months and steps are going to be taken to to basically okay. enshrine this in law. Can I just ask you what you think radicalisation means? Because I, I think we think we know what it means, but in this context, I just want to, you to explain what your view of being radicalised is, how it actually works and what the what the kind of thoughts would be of someone who is radicalised in, in comparison to someone who is just sexist or misogynist, just someone on the street someone in the workplace who says and does silly stupid things that they shouldn't do um, and, and are unacceptable in society but it's not it's not terrorism per se so if we look at the definition of radicalization under the current uh, terror laws um, the idea is that somebody um, is um, open to committing a violent act and their mindset has been slowly but surely changed from um, like you said making harmless comments or uh, sort of posting harmless memes and so on to actually wanting to take physical action in terms of causing terror or causing harm to somebody and I think that the reason why these are uh, it's becoming more and more of an issue is because we've got people like Andrew Tate and other influencers there that are using um, the, the sort of feelings of anger and rejection and frustration amongst these young men. And they're basically wow. capitalizing on these. They're monetizing, um, uh, monetizing misogyny. They're monetizing these feelings of anger and, and just kind of taking advantage, in my opinion, of young men who are clearly uh, unhappy, they're upset, turning these young men who would have just been able to speak out to their friends and so on at some point now they've got this um, massive subculture online they can t log in log on it's t telling men to get up off your ass go brush your teeth go clean yourself go work out go read books start grinding your emotions learn to control them channel anger channel rage channel that depression channel that anxiety that doubt into something positive go to the gym get a better body start a business, bust your ass, grind every day, no matter if you don't feel like it because no one's coming to save you. This is extreme misogyny. Stop being a fucking loser jacking off, watching porn all day. Stop being a fucking loser playing video games for eight hours a day. Get up off your ass and make something of yourself. This is extreme misogyny. Telling you to chase your goals, to be ambitious, to forget about women for a minute. Make yourself into a man first. Then you can enjoy the fruits of your labor. Women will then magnetize to you. Telling men basics like this is now extreme misogyny. We're monetizing on angry men. Wow. How mind-blowing that we live in such a weak fucking society. That the UK is full of such degenerates. That simply telling men to be the best that they could possibly be. To live up to their potential. To test their bodies and see what they're capable of. To expand their minds and learn new concepts is extreme misogyny. But if we were telling you to cut your dick off, if we were telling you to start painting your nails, to be more effeminate, to wear dresses and shit, and to like being a little feminine crybaby, and all the things they're trying to turn men into, this message would be getting pushed to the top. That's being progressive. That's having an open mind. You're so tolerant and accepting. But the opposite message is no, it's hate. The opposite message is extreme misogyny. 
showing you your value, why you shouldn't simp, why you're not just a walking wallet, what you could do to be more attractive in the eyes of women. That's extreme misogyny. Say that men and women are different. That's extreme misogyny. It will be one day they're going to categorize it. You can't say men and women are different. We're all the same. Like we're fucking robots. This shit is wild. Wow. Enjoy the ride, boys. You guys in the UK, you're leading the pack. Wow. And talked with these other men, other people that they may never have met in, in real life and they may never meet. And they can Crazy. actually share um, horrible fantasies. And it's actually normalizing those types of attitudes towards women. And then obviously at some Unreal. point, um, a young person, it for, for them, it might not be enough. So they want to take something, a, a steps in real life and they want to actually live out some of these horrible fantasies. And some of the, the messages I've read, and, and by the way, Peter, sorry, I, I should have also added, I'm actually a classroom teacher as well. Oh, I didn't know. Okay. Young, young dis- uh, disadvantaged and disenfranchised young men uh, for the last uh, four years. And I've actually had conversations face to face with these young people. And it's not just, um, you know, uh, young men feeling, young boys feeling unhappy about, sort of, say, the economy, for example, the fact that there's no jobs, there's no um, put, sort of possibilities for them when they leave school. Um, the chances of them getting good GCSEs are very low as well. So these are all issues that combine together so and you're, it, it, you're actually let me just get into that a little bit Aisha because of course the extreme end of this is the terrorism and what you're saying should be the law but actually you're at the the, the sort of the the original bit of it the start I said well hopefully not the start but hopefully you're you're curbing it but there are many young men you're dealing with on a daily basis who <laughs> are perhaps at risk of this or at risk of, of these sorts of being not necessarily radicalised but certainly influenced by these kinds of videos. Yeah, oh, absolutely. I mean, um, when you think about it, these young men are being expo- young boys. Sorry, I should, let's just start with um, they're being exposed to all types of very casual misogyny. Um, they're, they're playing games uh, and characters that are female that are being uh, run over. They're being beaten up. They're being stamped upon. And and then they see GTA five is going to be illegal soon, because if you run over a female in a game or an MP, a bot, if you run over a bot, dude, walking on the sidewalk, it's you're oh, my God, extreme misogyny. Look, this is what he wants to do in real life. All the boys that have played Call of Duty in the past couple years. God damn. We just got the future soldiers of America right there because they're playing Call of Duty. And they want to shoot guns. Oh, my God. They're going to be mass killers. What the fuck? This is crazy. These people are so disconnected from the real world. Blows me away. I didn't think we would get here this fast. Seriously. In their home lives, they see it with amongst their friends. Holy they see crap. It in potential relationships that, um, that are playing out in front of them. And there's nobody to challenge these types of ideas. And that's something that I feel really Unreal. strongly about as a teacher. As soon as there's some kind of comment that's been made, um, oh, we don't want to pick up our plates because it's not our job. It's a girl's job. These are the types of comments that it starts from. Right. And, and you know, I speak to young girls, I, I teach young um, girls as well, and the kind of um, comments that they have to put up with, comments about their bodies, comments about their looks, comments about whether somebody would want to sleep with them. And these are teenage girls, they're like 12, 13, 14, and they don't have the tools or the skills that to, to basically stand up for themselves. They are effectively bullied by these young boys who are... Women bully women worse than any other man could ever. The women are making those passing comments to other women. The girls are bullying the girls. The girls are mean to other girls. The girls are seeing what social media is telling them how they should look like. The surgeries they need to get. The boob jobs. The Brazilian butt lifts. The nose jobs. The All the makeup. All that shit. These little girls are seeing other women and trying to emulate them. And if they fall short, they're made to feel insecure. And they pick on each other so fucking mean. Anybody knows. They'll tell you teenage girls are the worst. They're worse to each other than a boy ever would. Boys are still fucking nervous to talk to a girl at that age. Damn, this shit is crazy, dude. They're pinning everything on men and boys, always. It's always your fault. Also similar in ages as well. Wow. And I think then that snowballs. And when, and obviously going back to my previous point, when uh, you log online and you have other people that are writing similar things and sharing similar views, um, wow. it's normalized, it's internalized. And it's really difficult to then, um, as a young adult, after having all these kinds of views, Yes. Uh, is, it, is it all coming? I mean, you're seeing young people are, is it all, and you know about the, the, the very radical side of it as well. Is it all coming from men? It's all coming from young men or are there some young women or older women who are doing this as well? Or I mean, what sort of proportion would you say? 
I think what I've seen is that um, obviously these are young men that are basically expressing themselves, but they're helped by other young women and other women as well. So if they have um, a very patriarchal, very uh, traditional or conservative. There it is. I knew. I was thinking, is it traditional women? Are traditional women going to be next that are espousing conservative ideals, like being a stay-at-home mother, like having big families, a lot of babies, like serving your husband? I knew this is, these women are supporting misogynist young men. I fucking knew that they would go there. That's crazy. But um, upbringing, sorry, um, they will have seen that type of attitude, the types of attitudes where women are there to serve the men, women are there to make the men happy and to make wow. sure they're looked after. And it's a woman's job. Uh, whereas men, um, effectively, boys as well, can do what they want. There's no accountability, there's no responsibility, and it's absolutely perfectly fine. And mm. I and I speak as a Pakistani Muslim woman from a Punjabi background, very patriarchal. So I have seen this growing up amongst my own family family members amongst the, the How, how have you challenged it in your own community or uh, Aisha? What have you what have you tried to do? Well, number one, um, I was very lucky that I was able to get an education because so many of my my friends, people sort of um, around my age, when I talk to people and I say, well, most of my friends got married at 15 and 16 um, and then they became housewives. They were they weren't even some weren't even allowed to go and finish their GCSEs and, and get qualifications and uh, able to support themselves. Yeah, and your reality and your Pakistani culture is not the reality for most women in the West. We don't marry them at 15 and tell them they're not allowed to go get their education. Oh, and that was dude. from, um, you know, growing up in the 90s in the UK. And and then obviously I've gone to university. Uh, I was one of the first people to, female to drive, sorry, amongst my community. And these are the little, little things that I look back on. And I think, gosh, we have come a massive way from back, you know, those years. Your people. But in some ways not so not so much and that still makes me very upset which is why i speak out about it a lot and i try to um show women um to, uh, that are empowered that are have that have an education that have good jobs that are able to make their own decisions um we shouldn't be afraid of these women we shouldn't be um you know trying to pull them down or try to criticize them or mm. see them as an anomaly because we're not and, have, and have, you had have you had pushback from within your own community i think i've been very lucky because i'm Wow, man. All right. I've had enough of this bullshit. Being men is considered terrorism now. So glad to be living in Saudi Arabia. <laughs> Once again, let's not tackle the cause of young men feeling ostracized, but instead let's punish them for society's failures. And that is the perfect way to put it. Succinctly put, man. Jesus Christ. Fix your own community before you attack English. If you want women's rights, worry about... <clears throat> That one thing, and not a guy that lives in Romania. And by look, for the Romanian thing, I'm sorry for you, UK bros, but if you're within the EU and you got a good head on your shoulders and you want a nice traditional life, I walk, I just did a video today. Look at it. It's all in Bucharest. I'm walking around raw footage. I'm not even talking most of the time. Just look at the difference of what it looks like, the families, the people. Contrast that with what the hell is going on in the UK today. It's at the end of the link here. It pops up. I'm not going to talk any longer so that it keeps showing up for you guys. If you enjoyed today's episode and you'd like to see more, please like, comment, subscribe, all that stuff. Help push it in the algorithm. Click on the videos above if you want to see the second channel. Thank you to everybody that's in the private community and buying shirts and doing the consultations. It supports the channel directly because holy shit, where we're headed is insane. We are already there. Misogyny will soon get you on terrorism charges. Wow. And yet not a peep about misandry. We haven't heard one time of them talking about women being radicalized online. Okay, we'll see you guys on the next one. Click on that video above. See for yourself.